Americans cherish the names of many stars for whom the final curtain has been run down, but no name is more highly honored than that of Will Rogers, the Oklahoma cowboy whose homespun humor made him a national institution. You see him here on location for one of his early day pictures. The girl with him is Ruth Rowland, one of the silent screen's most famous stars. And here is the Will Rogers family in the early 20s. The children are, left to right, Jimmy, Mary, and Will Jr. Like Tom Mix, Will Rogers became an entertainer by joining a Wild West show. In his case, a troupe that was playing Cape Town, South Africa, where he had gone during the last year of the Boer War to deliver a shipload of livestock to the British Army. Billed as the Cherokee Kid, his trick riding and roping made him an overnight hit with South African and European audiences. In 1905, he starred in New York's Madison Square Garden and quickly found himself in demand by every American booking agency. He played Hammerstein's Roof, made several tours of big-time vaudeville circuits, and became the hit attraction of the Ziegfeld Follies. His screen career began in 1919. Will Rogers, seen here with his son Jimmy at a polo match, found his greatest success with the birth of talking pictures, which gave him opportunity to capitalize on the same homely philosophizing that had endeared him to stage audiences. With his success, he developed ever wider interests. His newspaper column, in which shrewd observations about world affairs were seasoned by his pungent wit, became a daily must for millions. And here in Hollywood, Will Rogers found leisure in which to gratify his taste in living. One of his chief hobbies was polo. You see him here with some of his teammates, Big Boy Williams, Charles Farrell, and Johnny Mac Brown. Will Rogers, by then a man in his middle 50s, rode as recklessly as the most dashing youngster on the polo field. Clean living and constant exercise had kept his body young. His bubbling sense of humor had preserved his youthful viewpoints. To saddle pals like these, he was an idol and an inspiration. He was a born fighter, and the teams he captained always played the win. This trophy, presented by Mrs. Frank Borzaghi, the wife of the famous director, is only one of scores that found a final resting place on the mantle of the Rogers home. That young husky to whom he hands the cup is the same Jimmy Rogers you saw a few scenes ago as a youngster. With State Fair, and this is a scene from that picture, Will reached the very pinnacle of popularity. Off screen, meanwhile, he had developed another enthusiasm, aviation. In August of 1935, he embarked with Wiley Post, the famous round-the-world flyer, for a flight that was to have girdled the earth. They climbed into the cabin of their plane, the Winnie May, waved a last goodbye to the many friends who had gathered to bid them Godspeed, and disappeared into northern skies. A few days later, Hollywood was stunned by news of their death. Men like Will Rogers die, but they are never forgotten. His ranch near Hollywood was recently dedicated as a California state park to honor his memory. To pay him reverence came John Charles Thomas, the great singer. And Leo Carrillo, one of the most devoted of Will Rogers' friends. Earl Warren, governor of California, lauded his memory. Jimmy Rogers, his son, spoke on behalf of the Rogers family. And on the edge of the crowd stood another faithful friend, Soap Suds, Will's favorite saddle horse. He remembered, too. In Claremont, Oklahoma, the birthplace of Will Rogers, stands a memorial that speaks eloquently of the love that all America felt for this truly great American. It was built not by the donations of wealthy friends, but by the dimes and quarters of the millions to whom he brought entertainment and encouragement. Could any man ask a nobler shrine? <laughs>